but so let's go across and listen in to what the mood is like at the dealing rooms nigel over to you Well, Sony, I'm sure the dealers are quite happy to see me uh, today, at least, because the market is trading uh, in the green territory. And the first time I came here, in fact, it was a very, very tense situation. But Dilip ji is uh, with us. Uh, uh, so, what's your take? I mean, there was some talk that a couple of bad series always gives rise to a good series. Do you believe in that phenomenon? And the flows really not supporting us. The best in class have been selling off in the last few days. Well, I think I, I hope you are right, <laughs> and uh, for the sake of everyone, I hope you are right. And even from the law of averages point of view, I think it should catch up. Mm -hmm. But more important, I think uh, people are not expecting anything great from the budget, as what we have seen. Even the railway budget, the intent has been very good. We know the government is in the right direction, but performance always falls short of that. And I think even in this budget, the expectations are not very high. So I think the mark, the way the markets have sold off. I think the markets are right for some kind, some kind of a good bounce back. All right, you know, let's hope that in fact it is true. But uh, you know, uh, uh, Mr. Bad, if I just take a look at it, in the last week, the last couple of weeks, the stocks that haven't even participated in that 200-point rally have been the HDFC Twins, Indusind Bank, Kotak Mahindra Bank, and that clearly is a point of a worry. If the men, the best in class sell off, uh, then where, where does an investor hide? Yeah. You are absolutely right. I think. As what I was telling, we are in that phase at the moment for quite some time, mm -hmm. where the fear is overwhelming, overriding, and everything else is relegated to the background. Yeah. So I think uh, a little bad news, and I think the sell-off is very disproportionately huge, and a little bad rumor, and I think the market reacts very uh, a knee-jerk reaction, but that also is very disproportionate. So I think this typically becomes one of those phases, and especially the banking sector, if, as what you have seen, yeah. the way there is a lot of talk about uh, NPS being uh, written off, and without any clarity as to how the government is going to recapitalize them, yeah. and if at all they recapitalize, where will be the money left with the government to spend anywhere else? So I think uh, all those worries are very integrated and very interlinked, and I think that is what is really causing. You know, kind of a blurred vision as to what is the way forward on this. Yeah. Sure, you know, I, I'll take your point in terms of the intent of the railway minister was good. But if the finance minister has good intent, but if there are lack of actions that will come through, then in fact we could be staring at uh, another downtick. So, what's your take on that front? What exactly? What are you looking forward to that can maybe turn the sentiment in this kind of a market? Where we're seeing the FI is non-stop selling. Yes, his highest gross sell figure we've seen in the last one month, highest net sell figure as well in more than a month. Uh, the FI is there. They're just getting out of here. I think, as far as the FIs are concerned, they are more or less in an auto sell kind of a mode at the moment. Yeah. So, without looking at any of the fundamentals or without looking, they are probably targeting still some of the most liquid stocks at the moment. Yeah. Uh, I don't think that is really going to change in a hurry the way uh, if the uh, trend is any indicator at the moment. Mm -hmm. But coming back to the budget, I think we all are looking for as to how this investment climate is going to be revived, yeah. how this investment can give a good multiplier impact. There are green, uh, you know, green shoots, and there are quite a few areas where the sectors are doing well. You have CV cycle, which has a tremendous multiplier impact. Then you have a road and infra, which, if really increased in a big way, can give a good multiplier impact. Mm -hmm. But I think this budget will need to clearly spell out the extra money that they are collecting, how they will try to revive the uh, investment, the multiplier impact thereof, and overall the sentiments. All right. And do you think that LIC is holding on to its guns in case we go on to that, you know, and go to that 6,500? Then we'll see more support coming in from LIC. Or do you think their participation has picked up in the last couple of days as it is? Well, they've always been a participant. So when you talk about DIIs, yeah. I think it is basically LIC which really lends a huge support to the markets. So they have a very twin responsibility of trying to participate in the disinvestment process as well as in the secondary market. Fortunately, they are really flushed with funds on a longer term basis. Yeah. And they've always been very smart investors at that. So I think that is probably the bright point. But otherwise, uh, I think uh, the kind of mode is that nobody is really in a hurry to buy at the moment. Okay, and what about mid-caps? You know, we have seen a sharp correction from the top. Uh, I mean, people are talking about exit mid-caps, maybe, and look at large caps. But if you go to exit them, I don't think there's that kind of liquidity or the that kind of buyers as well that are willing to absorb uh, this kind of selling. Mid-caps still more pain, or would you start nibbling into uh, select uh, mid-caps? Your observation is quite correct that, you know, First and foremost, constraint is that there is no exit as far as the mid caps are concerned. Yeah. And 
I think mid caps have fallen quite a bit, but in, in the prevailing atmosphere, I don't think uh, mid caps probably will find favor. Maybe a very few on a very selective basis might really uh, form the, I mean, the top picks. But by and large, mid cap will be the space which people will not touch in a hurry because the frontline uh, stocks themselves have started looking like mid caps and there are a lot of them probably at the valuations at which they are, it's better to focus on the front lines rather than the mid caps at this stage. Okay, uh, Mr. Bhatt, getting into this budget, two stocks give us where investors can go and hide from the Nifty itself. Well, I think last and two still I think is a uh, good stock to really place the bet behind because that is all the trappings of uh, the good order booking, the good execution and I think a little support from the government, I think the execution will improve uh, tremendously at the moment yeah. and I think I would go something like uh, uh, one of the pharma names, maybe it is Lupin or maybe it's Orlando Pharma, something like that. Alright, and thanks so much Mr. Bhatt for giving us uh, all those details. Sonia, Lata, back to you in the studio, at least we got a couple of picks from Mr. Bhatt. Alright, uh, Nigel, thanks so much for that, so that's the word coming in. From the dealing rooms uh, of Prabhudas Liladar, the markets are perhaps ripe for a bounce back. But for now, the market is giving up on its